Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Pastor May, good evening. It's half past five. This is Update for Monday, 24th of July, 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes to look at the latest news on the island. Background to that news and sport, business, sea watch, travel updates and the newsmakers in person this evening. Why consultant Peter Duffy left Noble so quickly? The health minister says the committee reports full of errors. Castletown commissioners hit back over the fire station. Manx cinema goers embrace the Barbenheimer hype and the search for a new bishop of Sodor and Man is underway here at the home of the Hawfway Horse Trap. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Fastamai Chanel Soku. Fastamai. The former infrastructure minister has claimed the Council of Ministers is taking risks behind closed doors with taxpayers' money. Chris Thomas was outed from Coman last week after being sacked by the chief minister. A reporter says he'll fight to protect the freedom of the Manx media following a dispute with the Isle of Man government. And Manx cinema goers are said to be embracing the hype as hundreds have been attending screenings of the box office hits Barbie and Oppenheimer. In international news, hundreds of holidaymakers have landed back in the UK as wildfires on the Greek island of Rhodes continue to burn. Britain's first £1 million football player Trevor Francis has died aged 69. The former England striker suffered a heart attack at his apartment in Spain. And Paris Saint-Germain has accepted a world record bid of £259 million for Kylian Mbappe. The player has been given permission to speak to Saudi club Al-Hilal. Those were your headlines. News at 6. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face-to-face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Coromaya, thank you. Chanel from the Ronalds Way Met Office. There is no wind warning in operation for the North Irish Sea. Uh, state of sea is slight and this evening dry. A uh, nice evening. A light to moderate northwest wind. Clear spells and blue skies. Overnight minimum temperature. 10 Celsius and for Tuesday Jamert dry with sunny spells a light to moderate westerly wind up to 18 degrees tomorrow turning cloudy after dark and down to 13 uh, through the night for Wednesday Jacrain a dry start but then some rain coming in on a fresh southerly turning persistent and heavy as the wind increases to strong daylight maximum 18 on Wednesday High water was about an hour ago, sunset 29 minutes before 10, low water is at 16 minutes to 11, high tide 27 minutes before 5, sunrise tomorrow morning 19 minutes past 5 in the morning, low water at 3 minutes past 11. Visit the Banks Glass and Glazing website and see a range of products from windows to doors, mirrors to splashbacks, manxglass.com. A consultant neurologist says he's very reluctantly left his post due to the impact of an extremely traumatic whistleblowing ordeal. Peter Duffy's clarified the reasons behind his unexpected departure from Manx Care, saying he had no issues with the quality of care at Nobles. He told Manx Radio he left due to ongoing repercussions from an incident involving Morecambe Bay Trust, which at one point left him suicidal. The reason I came to Nobles was because I was forced out of my old job in Morecambe Bay back in 2016 and the whole thing went through an employment tribunal in 2018 and then to a, an NHS England investigation in 2020-2021 and this in turn claimed to have found two old emails from my account which were then used to report me to the General Medical Council and the whole process was extremely traumatic and could very easily have led to me being struck off by the GMC, possibly even a a sort of file being passed to the police or the Crown Prosecution Service. It turns out that these 2014 emails, uh, which were used to cause so much trouble for me and which very nearly had me taking my own life at one point, uh, actually didn't exist in 2018. So I was able to work back months and months after these appeared 
um, and find legal statements from my employment tribunal in 2018. So this was some four years after it was being claimed these emails had been sent, uh, which showed absolutely clearly that these emails hadn't yet come into existence. So I think when you're subject to that kind of witch hunt, and it's being done through your medical regulator. It's very difficult to keep working when that sort of thing's going on in the background, and it leaves you extremely vulnerable to to more attempts to get at you through your medical regulator. And so in the end, I very reluctantly made the decision that I should terminate my career early, go for voluntary erasure from the profession and and leave. The Health and Social Care Minister says the report by the Health Services Consultative Committee is full of errors. The body published its annual report earlier this month. That story from Sean Cowper. Following the publication of the report, outgoing chair of the committee, Andrew Cole, gave an interview to Isle of Man TV where he was critical of Laurie Hooper's behaviour towards the board. But... The minister says he has concerns about how the committee has been conducting its work. It contains a, a raft of errors. There are so many errors in it, actually. I, I, someone's asked me previously, can you can you do a point-by-point point rebuttal? I can't. Actually, there's so much in it that is just wrong. It, it would be almost impossible for me to do that. Ultimately, the ultimate concern I have with this body is that they are not acting in accordance with the law. One element in their report describes how they currently operate and states, I think on page 16, that this approach has ministerial support. It categorically does not. I have written to them in the past saying I think what you're doing is unlawful you need to change and they have not uh, so really as part of that process to say you, you, the law is the law you have to follow it uh, there is no choice there uh, and whilst you are under my responsibility it is my responsibility to make sure you follow the law. Isle of Man TV's Paul Moulton said he also invited the minister to discuss the topic but that interview was declined. Mr Hooper said on Twitter that he doesn't consider Mr Moulton's platform to be a news organisation. It comes just days after Mr Moulton received a legal letter from the Department of Health and Social Care's lawyers. I will fight it and I will go to jail over it if I have to because this cannot be seen by anyone. It seems an inappropriate way of handling a, a dispute. A, to send a letter like that, but B, then to kind of go onto Twitter and call me uh, I'm, I don't know, what I, I'm not qualified. I'm, I'm a jobbing thing with a camera. I, I have no right now to cover Timwald, he thinks, because I don't hit the criteria. I have no code of conduct. This is all bonkers because I've signed up for it years ago. He should be in, inviting more interaction from the media not shutting us down. Manx Radio has invited the Isle of Man government to respond to Mr Moulton's comments. You can hear more from Mr Moulton and Mr Hooper on Agenda with Phil Gorn after 6pm. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. The search for a new bishop for the Isle of Man is underway and despite the appointment process involving input from the UK Prime Minister's Office and the Archbishop of Canterbury, people on the Isle of Man are being invited to uh, take part in the process. The Venerable Irene Cowell. There's a lot of consultation that needs to take place. It involves various people, for, both from within the Prime Minister's advisory team and also the Archbishops, as well as across our own diocese amongst what we call the Vacancy and C Committee who uh, are tasked with the, the role of, of drawing together a statement of needs for our diocese. There's an understanding that there's a need for, for some change. The diocese face many of the same problems other organisations face across the world really in terms of financial issues, buildings and also an ageing population and I think for us the challenge is is making in this generation to the whole of society and how we can connect and how we can address some of those issues. The bishop is actually paid from central funds in the Church of England. We don't actually contribute to the costs of the bishop. It isn't a drain on our resources and to have a bishop I think is really important as that spiritual leader for our island, somebody who can be visible and be part of the community and life here. Cinema goers are said to be embracing the hype as hundreds have been attending screenings of the box office hits Barbie and Oppenheimer. Both films were released on the same day, leading to the most successful weekend at the British box office since before COVID-19. Here's Lewis Foster. Here on the Isle of Man, if you want to see both films on the same day, as many people have been doing, you'll have to run or walk the three quarters of a kilometre along Douglas Promenade between the Palace Cinema, where Greta Gerwig's Barbie is being screened, and the Broadway Cinema, where Chris Christopher Nolan's wartime epic about the father of the atomic bomb Oppenheimer is showing. 
The UK Cinema Association says the films have helped generate almost £30 million, and it seems the movie theatres on the Isle of Man have taken a slice of that. Broadway Cinema, for example, says it's welcomed hundreds of people to watch Oppenheimer this weekend. A spokesperson told Manx Radio all the social media buzz which has been felt around the world really has created an unprecedented cinema event. All the excitement around these films has reminded people how important and exciting film going can be as an experience. There are some films that are made to be seen on the big screen and these two films are perfect examples of that. We're delighted, they say, that the Isle of Man audiences have embraced the hype and relished the opportunity to see both films this weekend and in the weeks to come. Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Motorship Man McCree departed Hesham at 19 minutes past two. She'll be into the bay in Douglas in the next 10 minutes or so and onto the link span about six o'clock. Leaving this evening at 7.45, arriving in Hesham at half past 11. The overnight departure 2.15 and back to Douglas at six tomorrow morning. High speed craft Mananan departed Douglas at 19 minutes past three. She'll be by the link span in Liverpool in the next 10-15 minutes or so, leaving at 7.15, back to Douglas at 10 tonight. Tomorrow morning's departures, Mananan departs Douglas at 7 o'clock for Belfast, 8.45, Ben McCree to Hesham. Like the Steam Packet on Facebook for the latest sailing information. Castle Town Commissioners say previous claims about the proposed demolition of the old fire station are misguided. Former Chief Minister Tony Brown said he had concerns about the cost of the building on ratepayers, as our local democracy reporter Emma Draper. Castle Town Commissioners has issued a rebuttal over claims made by former Chief Minister Tony Brown about a proposal to demolish the old Castle Town fire station. The local authority says the claims are misguided and fail to consider wider implications for the town. In a statement, it says the plan to demolish the building and create short-term parking aligns with the position taken by successive boards. It's also confirmed the authority didn't buy the site so it could have the fire station building. The commissioners say they were approached by a number of third parties, which they believe underscores the strategic importance of the site. Originally, a local brewery had planned to use the building. However, this fell through and the authority says it's disappointed that this was the final result. The setback from the previous company has not derailed the commissioners' long-term plans to explore more suitable options and it says the building could be used as an interim option for its own use. Manx Radio Business Briefing. And 17 minutes before six, Ocado's won a 200 million pound settlement from the Norwegian company Autostore after a three year legal battle over robot patents. Both Autostore and Ocado licensed their warehouse technology to retailers globally which has led to legal battles over intellectual property rights. In a joint statement released on Saturday the company said they were withdrawing their actions against each other and have reached a deal. The Stock Market Report brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European markets closed slightly higher. The dollar edged up. Oil rose and gold Gold prices traded a tight range. The numbers from Ramsey Crookall at the close in London. The FTSE 100 was up two tenths of a percent at 7,678. The DAX in Frankfurt closed up uh, eight hundredths of a percent, almost a tenth of a percent at 16,190. A short time ago, New York City. The Dow Jones Industrials up half a percent at 35,413. The NASDAQ Tech Stocks Index up uh, two hundredths of a percent at 14,036. And the S&P 500 in Chicago is up almost four-tenths of a percent at 4,553. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling trading at one US dollar, 28.2 cents, one euro, 15.7 cents, and 23 South African rand, 74.2 cents. In commodities, gold's down a fraction at $1,960 per troy ounce, and a barrel of Brent crude is up two and a third of a percent at $82.53. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall and you're paying monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house, of the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. You should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. 
Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. He's live on Man in Line tomorrow at 12 midday and for the eighth time since May, Alfred Cannon, the Chief Minister, is looking for a new member of his Council of Ministers after firing Chris Thomas from the infrastructure portfolio last week. Mr Thomas was sacked a week ago but he's told Manx Radio he actually really still wants the job. You can see I'm so frustrated. I really want to be the infrastructure minister and you can rest assured I'm going to approach my political life over the summer and in future years on the on the same basis as I did when I was wrongly fired back in May 2020 which is trying to lead from the back if we've always had enough to work together and I regret that we had that foolish reckless weekend which meant that I'm not still the Minister of Infrastructure but hey I believe in public policy first and foremost you know this government's programme and some of the risks that they seem prepared to take with huge amounts of public funds behind closed doors you know I was shocked when the Treasury Minister said in this Tim Wood um, that he wasn't quite sure how how much had been spent on the um, on the new vessel, the excellent Manxman vessel? You know, who knows? And, and so on. Second point is, you know, you will remember I didn't join the government at first, and I tried to have a debate in the House of Keys about policies because this Tim World was ridiculous to me in public policy terms. So we had one motion which said that the preferred options for dealing with nursing and residential care, at one end we had the Scottish model which could be described as quite a left wing model, you know, National Health Service taken into care and at the other end we had the Jersey model, cap and threshold and all of that which is quite normally perceived to be a right wing model and we've ended up with this fudge where we're operating two completely opposite um, types of response to residential and nursing care and that sums it all up to me. We needed a group of politicians who decided before they formed the government to do one or the other. At the moment in council ministers I sometimes think we've got Boris Johnson, wannabes and Tony Blair fans all mixed together and they're trying to do pragmatic compromises all of the time which isn't really the recipe for dealing with the major challenges that we've got. Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio Sport. Fast to my Rhian Evans. Fast to my good afternoon. Starting with some of the results from this year's Grand Fondo and Manxman and favourite for the event this time round was Tyler Douglas Hannay and he certainly didn't disappoint. He stormed around the shortened course to come in first in just one hour, 48 minutes and 11 seconds. He battled it out towards the end with Will Draper but pipped him to the post by just one second. Becky Storry was the first woman to finish, crossing the line 48th overall in two hours and three seconds. And the first under-21s woman to cross the line was Sophie Smith, finishing in a time of two hours, nine minutes and five seconds, 80th overall. You can find a link to all the results from this year's Grand Fondo on this story on the Manx Radio Sports Hub. And from cycling to football, it's been a busy weekend for FC Isle of Man, who have been working hard on getting game time under their belts before the start of the new season. First up, the Ravens took on Southport FC who compete in the National League North and it was a tough opening half for the home side as they went down 4-0 better in the second half though keeping the visitors to just one goal the match ended 5-0 to Southport FC next up the Ravens took on some more familiar faces in local team Corinthians there was only one in it at half time with FC Isle of Man leading 2-1 whatever manager Paul Jones said to them in the changing rooms must have lit a fire underneath them because they came out out on a mission in the second half, finishing with a dominating 9-1 victory over Corinthians. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Everything on time at the moment, inbound at Rondles Way, the uh, 5 to 8 Logan Air from Liverpool was showing on time. Then it's the 10 past 8 Logan Air from London City and the 25 to 9 Easy Jack from Gatwick, all on time. Fingers crossed, uh, outbound, 6 o'clock Logan Air to Liverpool and the 5 past 9 Easy Jet back to London Gatwick. Port Cornet Road's closed for emergency road repairs in Glen Mona. We've got temporary lights on the Newcastle. Town Road near the Santon Motel for patching work. In Port Aaron, temporary lights on Station Road near Ballamadral for gas main work. And Ballagorn Road's closed in Boldrine for drainage work. Crowdle Road closed between Harbour Road and Fairway closed for gas upgrade work in Oncombe. And the Garth Road in Tossaby uh, between Tossaby Road and the Foxdale Road is closed for bridge replacement work. In Peel, East Keys closed between 
the House of Mananan and the Road Bridge. Ballymena Road, Jervie's got phase closures. Temporary lights on Victoria Road, Douglas at the Falcon Cliff Terrace Junction for water main work. York Road's closed in Douglas between Woodburn Road and Ballaquail Road. And in Farm Hill, Annika Road and Cusher Road are closed in phases for resurfacing. H&H Motorcycles.im for all your motorcycle requirements. South Gear Industrial Estate, opposite Keyside Tyres. Call 665646. Professionals in the land registry business say they'd like to see the continuation of Manx safeguards in cases of challenges over land ownership. A Tynwall committee has heard evidence from the land registrar over a consultation taking place on adverse possession, where land appears to have been abandoned. Registrar James Lowry says the Manx system of trying to find the owner of land differs from the UK. They would like to continue to have some of the protection that we have now in the island as well. One of the one of the items that they mentioned was well, when we've got a registered owner of a property, obviously they've put an they put an address that they will accept service on their title deeds, and so if somebody tried to put an application to possess their land, we would write to them at that address. One of the professional recommendations was well, that's fine, but shouldn't we also be doing what we know what we do now, which is basically ask for advertise advertisement of the property possibly in a newspaper, possibly with a notice on the property. You know, one of the main difficulties with people with registered property is potentially you can abandon your property by not updating the address that you are served at. If you're not living at a property, it's vital that you have the correct address for service on the land registry because then we will correspond to the address that we're told to. Realistically, nobody's going to do that, are they? So if I own a piece of land and I've got title deeds to prove that it's my land, somebody puts a challenge to that and I've moved to it two or three times, does it mean that I'm never going to be aware that somebody is challenging my ownership? Well, under the UK system, all they do is write to the registered address. So the proposal that we would have would be to, to continue to have a form of advertisement. So, you know, in the Isle of Man, when you put a notice on somebody's door, people do see it. Um, or if you put a notice in the paper, people do see it. We constantly see applications for voluntary first registrations and vol- and for a- adverse possession where we have this adver- advertisement requirement and we constantly get correspondence from neighbours or potential objectors. So the system that we have at the moment does work. This is the most listened to Isle of Man news source and Manx Radio's update is the Isle of Man's most downloaded news podcast. Manx Care says there was an increase in did-not-attend rates for face-to-face GP appointments from May to June. Looking at the statistics, is Lewis Foster. The health body says 976 people didn't turn up for their appointments when they were supposed to in June, compared to 960 the month before. It's a recorded monthly rise from 3.62% to 4.53%. Compare the figures with six months ago, however, when there were 1,400 missed appointments in December. There was a similar increase in DNAs at the Manx Emergency Doctors' Service, where 12 out of the 336 appointments were missed during the same period. That's an increase in non-attendees from 1.59% to 3.57%. Since last year, Manx Care has been putting more emphasis on the issue after more than 7,000 DNAs were recorded in the first six months of 2022. Health Minister Laurie Hooper had this appeal. 1,203 missed GP appointments a month is a significant number of appointments that could very well be used by other patients. And I would reiterate the, the ask that if patients do need to cancel their appointments for whatever reason, that they contact their practice, uh, like I say, by email, by telephone, or using the patient access system to cancel their appointment so that somebody else can use it. And that's what Manx Care is asking once again. Anyone who cannot attend their appointment is urged to please cancel it by getting in touch with their GP by any means so that it can be offered to someone else. Improvements to the Isle of Man's abortion services mean those less than 14 weeks pregnant can now have all their treatment carried out on the Isle of Man. But despite most treatments able to be carried out here, women who are more than 14 weeks pregnant will still have to be treated in the UK. Here's consultant gynaecologist Sanjay Sinner. You'll also hear from Manx Care's General Manager for Integrated Women, Children and Families Care Group, Linda Thompson. It is something which is definitely possible and it is something which we are offering to women in certain circumstances, like uh, where there is a fetal animal identified, we are 
supporting such women to have uh, termination even after 14 weeks where we have a dedicated board in gynecology department and they get abortion to the medical process but obviously as a early medical abortion service this is still not commissioned or not fully developed but obviously we can look into that and how we can develop it in future a couple of things are there obviously the more advanced the pregnancy becomes the risks are higher from the risk of bleeding the risk of being incomplete and risk of needing extra like procedure like surgical evacuation obviously these things we have to keep in mind and we have to make sure that if we proceed for such procedures within the island then we have to back up for those facilities to manage those complications so we have to look into that we have expertise or not i think we have expertise in isolated areas but we have to have a full facilities before we go ahead with that isle of man is a small population isn't it some women may feel that they might not have as much confidentiality if they it is done within the hospital premises or within the island and if somebody wants that confidentiality i think some people choose to go off island and we support in that case also abortion services are part of the subject but in the 21st century that's not how we should be going forward we are launching the women's health strategy on the isle of man and it's going out to consultation within the autumn period and that is about reaching out to the public and women of the isle of man that's half the population to get their voice heard to understand what women actually want and that will inform how we develop services going forward. That's it for update tonight, compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department. Thanks to newsreader Chanel Suku, producer Rhian Evans. Stick around after the news at 6. Phil Gorn's here with Agenda. Greatest hits with Chris Kindley at 6.30. Time for Brass with Ian Cotcher at 9. And Dave Moore with The Late Show at 10. W-I-N-T.